I had a business card sent to me this week from Mark Miller. His YouTube channel is Mark's Creative Turnings, and I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description box down below the video. I hope you'll check him out. Also, I know this is blatant showing off, but I got this in the mail just yesterday from Colin Lawton from the UK. Colin is one of the organizers of A Turn for the Good, and this was a real surprise receiving this. And Colin, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to put a link to Colin's YouTube channel down below the video, and I hope you'll check him out if you haven't done so in the past. Now, you've probably heard the saying, you can choose your friends, but you're stuck with your family. Now you know where that came from. Now today's project is this piece of maple. I've turned into a very thick platter bowl. Usually we want to turn everything thin. All turners want to make their bowls thin for some reason, although it's not always necessary and sometimes not even practical. But this time I want to turn, turn something really thick and heavy, and I accomplished that. I'm really pleased with the finish on it. So let's go over and take a look at how this came to be and let me explain the finish and everything else about it. Today's project is going to be with a turning blank of figured maple. Two and a half inches thick, 12 inches in diameter. It does not have a very strong grain and that's what I want. I don't want it to be too prominent because what I'm going to do, I don't want it to overpower the rest of the project. I'm going to find the center first with my center finder. It goes up to 16 inches, so it's no problem with this. I just line up the 12 inch mark all the way around. And then I can find the center, mark it with this pencil. Now I'll use the centering jig for my face plate. Put it on there. Face plate on, and I just need to put the screws in to hold it there. Okay, now let's take it over to the lathe and get some work done. I am going to make a recess in the middle of this to fit the jaws on this chuck. The diameter of the chuck jaws is three and three eighths of an inch. Half of that is one and eleven sixteenths of an inch. And that's what I've set these dividers to. So I'm going to stick the right arm of the dividers on the center mark that I made with a pencil while this was spinning and use the left arm to scribe a line. Now bear in mind, I have this tool rest slightly above center. If I had it lower, this would be facing up this way and I would end up with this digging in, causing me probably some harm. So by having this at least level, if not slightly above, I avoid that. So I'm going to just turn this at 500 RPM and scribe that line. Now I'm going to start defining this with my parting tool and then I'll clean out the inside with this Cindy Drozda Signature Square End Recess Tool. At least I think that's what it's called. Again, I'll be turning at 500 RPM. And I will try to keep my hands out of the way of the camera. I better take the majority out with my 3 8 inch bowl gouge.
some kind of a hard spot in there somewhere giving it a real rough ride. I've turned this up to 1000 RPM now. I'll see if I can clean that up a little better at that speed. That's looking much better. Now I'll start to define the outside of the foot and then start to shape from there. want to look at what kind of space I've got here. I don't want this to be very deep. I want it to sit very close, almost look like it's floating on the table. I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to just chew up the outside now and sand everything. All right, that's looking better. Now I'm sure you could see that I was holding my hand, my left hand out quite away from the tool rest. That's because the shavings coming off of here were hotter than a firecracker. I just wanted to keep my hand out of there as much as I could. All right, I'm going to just put a couple of rings in here for decoration, face this off a little bit, and then sand everything. That was the Cindy Drozda Vortex tool to make the rings. I'm just going to use my bowl gouge in a shear scraping mode to round this over a little bit. All right, that just removed that sharp corner. Now the sanding. I have it signed and dated now, the species identified, and my logo coin glued in with cyanoacrylate glue. And I'm ready to put a finish on this. 
I'm going to start with a sanding sealer, a couple of coats. This is sanded to 600 grit, so I'll sand to 600 or 800 after each coat of sanding sealer. And then I'll put the finish on. I'll be back after the sanding sealer. Hampshire Sheen TI Wax. I've never tried this before. Got a little sample from Rob Summerlin. I'm going to give it a try. I'll put some on and be back to buff it up. Oh, that has made a nice difference. Beautiful job. Quite happy with that. Time to reverse this now. Well, this was interesting. I had one of the screws that I used to put the faceplate on break off. So I had to take a plug cutter and drill a hole down with that. Then take a 1 8 inch drill bit and drill for a little more depth around where the screw was so I could get pliers in here and wiggle it until I could get the screw to turn to remove it. So that's going to dictate a little more just what size of bowl I can actually make on here. Now I had a totally different plan for this piece of wood. But when I see it now, the grain is much nicer than I expected and I don't want to disguise any of it. So I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to make the bowl as large as I can just to get rid of these screw holes. And instead of having this come in concave down into the bowl or flat, I'm going to try to make it a bit domed. Take some of this away on the outside and bring it down in a dome shape. See how that's going to look. Always looking for something different. All right. That's going to be the minimum size of the bowl. I'll probably go a little larger than that though. Now it's time to start trying a little turning on this. I started at 500 RPM and then raised it to 1000 because this hole, getting past that at a lower speed, is not doing it very well. Okay, that large hole's gone. Now there's just a few small screw holes to get past so I can start to finish this out a little better.
All right, I think that's what I'm looking for. I'm just going to sand this now. I think this is beautiful wood. It's going to look good on its own, but I want to put just a little bit of something in here as a decoration. So I'm going to put two sets of two rings. I'm going to put them an inch between the rings. And each set of rings will be three-eighths of an inch apart. There and there. I'll just finish sanding this and that's it using the same finishing techniques that I used on the bottom I'm very pleased with this I know that most of us when we turn something we want to make it thin we want the walls of a bowl to be nice and thin but that's not always necessary and this time I just wanted to make something heavy and thick and I think this worked out just fine for that I want to thank you for joining me. I want to really thank all the people who have subscribed. I appreciate your support. And if you haven't done that, please consider doing so. I hope you'll come back next time. Between now and then, have fun in your shop and be safe. Take care now. Bye.